is going to be a new series. I'm not sure if I should call it Mari Monday or Ask Mari Yume, but this weekly video series is going to be about me answering your questions with uh, a little bit of a twist. This isn't a typical Q&A video because I find those videos to feel more like an interrogation. No, I thought we could just relax, have some fun, a little off the cuff conversation, which is why I'm going to be playing Kirby in the amazing mirror because I've never played this game before. And well, maybe this could bring some of you some nostalgia or uh, false memories of nostalgia since this is a Game Boy game and I'm excited to play this. So the first question is from Nani Roo who technically didn't ask me directly, but it doesn't matter because it's a valid question that I wanted to include in this video. I have a question. Why are so many male VTuber models done with such a hella weird proportions? Like insanely tiny heads on way too wide, big upper bodies. I just think it looks so odd. You know, I've always kind of wondered the same thing actually. Like, I don't know what it is, but in comparison to like female VTuber models, male VTuber models tend to um not only have like a small head, but they have like a really, really long pointy chin. I don't know if it's just like an art style or... I don't know, it has to be like a stylistic choice because I know it's possible to make male VTuber models that have similar proportions to how female VTuber models are made. I've made a couple of male avatars in my lifetime here as a VTuber artist, but I feel like maybe the reason why there's not a lot of emphasis on the face is because the whole point of like guy avatars or male VTubers is like the body. I've noticed that seems to be a trend where the face will kind of look okay, but then they put a lot of emphasis on like the clothes, the hairstyle, like the hat, just pretty much everything else except the face. And especially if you have like a muscular character, I I'm, I'm thinking it has to do with something like that, which looks fine in illustrations if that's all it is. But when it comes to like live 2D models and you actually have these parts moving around, it does seem kind of odd to see like a smaller head and like just facial features not really being that defined. Especially since for VTuber models, the majority of us are always showing our upper half body anyways, so you don't really see that much of the full body. Like I get it if they're like muscular and like wide, but if they're just like normal size, then it is kind of jarring to look at and I'm not... I don't know, again, I think it's just a stylistic choice because it is kind of weird to think about. Then again, drawing male VTuber models is actually really hard. Like, I always draw male VTuber models, like, it's always male VTuber models for me. But I just, I, from what, when I do my stuff, a lot of the guys that I draw, if they're not super muscular, they tend to be a bit more on the boyish side. So they look a lot younger. And I think that has to do with like the head size too, because if you make a more proportional head, then usually that's kind of associated with like the model looking a bit younger whereas if they have like a smaller head and more defined like bigger body then they seem older more mature and more masculine that could also be a reason why a lot of artists choose to like kind of disproportionate that way as well i'm wondering if there is a way to do like an equal balance between like a male vtuber head to like the rest of the body without overcompensating that super macho muscular look there has to be a way i'm just I've never really experimented with it. Maybe I should. It's a really good question. Now, the next question is from Alum, who's also a YouTube member. Thank you so much for becoming a YouTube member, Alum. I'm just in the process of learning to use some of my new audio stuff. So I do wonder if you have any advice related to audio balancing, especially during collapse. Like the stream with Evan, it was interesting that the audio for him was good on his side, but not as good on yours. You know, I'm gonna bump this together with Okino Muse's question, who is also part of my YouTube memberships. Thank you, because I see that you're both asking me a very similar question. Okay, so the thing with audio. Okay, first of all, I hate Discord so freaking much. Like, let me tell you, I cannot stand it. It really makes me so freaking mad. Like, I just, okay, how about, how about I explain it like this? So yes, on Evan's side, the audio always sounds really good. The same thing with Mr. Underhill. But the problem was, is that I don't know if I had something checked in my settings on Discord that was like causing it to kind of mess up because I know some of the settings on Discord can tend to like mess up the audio or if for whatever reason when evan and mr underhill connect their go xlr interface into obs something about their routing got messed up in the process so even though their microphone sounds good on their end it does not like translate well for the discord side of things and it has to do with like the actual routing table to also be fair 
We all use GoXLRs and GoXLR is not really good to use. Like, I'm sorry, but ever since they discontinued like making updates for it or, you know, whatever happened to, the, the, you know, the dev team, uh, well, I've been having a lot more issues with my audio interface. I'm actually trying to save up some money to buy a new audio interface because this was really expensive and I'm I'm very disappointed at the fact that not only is this not really getting a lot of like updates and help for things when they goof up, but I do notice a lot of audio issues and it's not just me either. Uh, a couple of my other VTuber friends also tend to have a lot of audio issues when they're using a GoXLR, which is crazy because GoXLR is meant for like, it's a very beginner friendly interface that you don't really need to know a lot. All the knobs are lit up and they tell you what they do. And like, I just, I don't know, it's, it's very disappointing. But to answer your question on balancing audio levels, typically it is nice to have an audio interface. It is and because you can connect a much more like nicer microphone, like a dynamic microphone. And what's really nice about that is you can balance your audio levels without having to use software. When you use hardware to balance your audio, that is how you're able to like yell and get really, really freaking loud without peaking. It's all taken care of based off of the hardware compared to like the software. You can still get the same effect with software, but I will say if you don't have like the best computer or like the best microphone, it can be kind of wonky and tedious to pick apart and adjust the settings for it. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, I've never made a video about audio before for VTubers or just in general because I have always used hardware and I am aware that this hardware can be very expensive and not everyone has the money to do that. Maybe one of these days I could, I don't know, maybe do like a collab with another VTuber or some kind of audio engineer to kind of go over like the software side of things because again, I know not everyone has hardware and even though I am much more comfortable talking about hardware, as much as I don't like GoXLR, I can talk about it and show you how to like set it all up. Uh, I would like to talk to somebody who is more familiar with the software side of things and can maybe like show me the ropes of it. That could be like a really cool future episode if that's something that you'd all be interested in. Otherwise, the best way to balance your audio levels is when you're going into like OBS or Slobs or Prism Live Studio, whatever, whatever you're using, you can actually separate which audio channels are what. Like you can separate your microphone. You can also separate the audio input for Discord. And then you just kind of like tweak the little, uh, what's it called? The little um, slider thingy. And if worst case scenario, you can also like adjust the sliders on people's volumes on Discord as well. But unfortunately, if they have a bad microphone, you're not gonna be able to do much about that. <laughs> As for your own microphone though, one thing I can say in terms of software is that OBS has a lot of filters that you can do. And there's like a really good plugin. I think they're called the Replugs or Reaper plugs. It's, I'll link it down below for the plugins that I used to use when I didn't use like an interface and I had to use like software stuff. There's also things called voice meter, but again, I'm not that familiar with using software. I just know for OBS specifically, you can add these filters like compressor, you can add like a, a limiter if you really need to. Honestly, I think most people just need to use a compressor filter and that typically takes care of like the majority of issues that most microphones have, like picking up the fan and like picking up like whatever, because basically the compressor lowers the source volume to reduce the likelihood of it peaking above a certain decibel. So whatever you have it set to, let's say like you're worried about potentially peaking when you're going to yell because it's very loud, that's what the compressor filter does in OBS. And yeah, that's like a filter that you can just get. I'll link it down below and that can solve a lot of your issues. Okay, so the last question is going to be from someone who is anonymous because they don't want their name to be shown. But this person had asked me this. Is it okay to just cut people out of your life with no warning? Especially if you have been friends with this person for a long time and they were incredibly toxic to you no matter how much you tried to help them or show support. I had a friend who could never take a compliment and it would be exhausting trying to help her out when it felt like she didn't want a confidence boost, but instead wanted an emotional punching bag to vent to whenever she needed. Oh man, that's um, that's a very heavyweighted question. Wow. Um, 
I feel like the answer I'm going to give might get a couple of like head turns, but I'm going to say yes. I think it's okay to just cut people out of your life with no warning if that's the case, because think of it like this. If this person does not respect you at all, like has just never made any attempts to show how much you mean to them or their appreciation or heck, even just saying thank you, like the only time they ever talk to you is when they need something, then they're not a friend. They're like, they're just using you flat out. And I don't think you need to like give someone an update being like, by the way, uh, I don't want to talk to you anymore. I feel like if this person didn't have the authenticity to just treat you like a normal human being, then they don't deserve to have some kind of warning that you're going to leave because what is that going to do? What is that going to change? If you warn them being like, oh, well, I just don't want to be friends anymore. That's not going to just make them do a sudden 180. Maybe it might make them be like, oh, no, 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 like I'll, I'll be better and better. And like they'll do it for like, I don't know, a couple of times. But eventually like old habits will just come back because at the end of the day, they never actually saw you as a, a friend. They just saw you as like a resource. And I feel like, you know, I feel like there are some people who don't realize how much they take some of their friends for granted who do so much for them because I'm sure like there are some people who have friends out there and they're like really, really awesome to them. But that person doesn't really do a whole lot. And then they just stop talking. You're like, oh, wait a minute. What happened? Look, like if this is like a situation that you feel like you're in, show your friends some appreciation, like for all the hard work that they do for you. Like part of being a friend is to be there for each other and to support each other and also to like uplift someone. And if they need like a reality check, be that person to give them that reality check. It's different if like it's just a one way street. Cause again, that just doesn't feel like a friendship to me. I understand that if you've been friends with a person for a really long time, then maybe like you should talk it out because maybe it could be one of those situations where maybe they were like really good friends and then they kind of like got lazy. Then I'm like, okay, maybe you should talk to them and be like, hey, like what's going on? Like lately it's been feeling like things between us have been kind of weird. Like and you could talk it out and that, then I feel like you could, you could work something out. But again, if this person has just never like really been there for you or has never actually shown any support and just takes and takes and takes, they're not a friend. Cut them out of your life. You do not owe them anything. In general, you actually don't owe people as much stuff as you think you do. And I had to learn this the hard way and like one at some point i just kind of got tired of being a doormat for people the amount of like people who i've cut out of my life because i i realized that they never actually viewed me as a friend you know i've felt so much better i now have friends who actually respect me who appreciate me and they go out of their way to like actually help me in ways that I've never had before. And it's like, it's hard to think about because if you've never had it, you don't know what it's like, but the moment you actually do have a strong supportive friend group, it is literally like night and day. You'll look back at your old past friendships and you'll be like, oh my God, I can't believe I, I let this person just walk all over me and just use me as like an emotional punching bag. Holy, I never realized like I could be friends with people who are on like the same wavelength as me. You know, and it's not even necessarily like a status thing, like just generally vibing with each other and also wanting the same goals and aspirations in life. And also just really, and I want to emphasize this, just really being supportive for your accomplishments. I have had friends in the past who have like gotten super jealous and like would be super passive aggressive over my achievements even before like I became a VTuber, like way before then, and they would just be upset that I'm doing stuff and they're not. And as much as I would try to help this person out, actually it was a couple different people, as much as I would try to help these people out, I've come to realize that some people don't actually want to like better themselves. They just want to complain into the void and be told that they're a good person, that they're a nice person, that they're this and that, and then go off on their miserable day. I don't want that. I don't want to be around people like that. It's exhausting and it's very draining to talk to people like that. And this is not like, oh, someone has a bad day and I, and I don't want to talk to them. No, this is a very distinct feeling. It is literally draining talking to these types of people. They're called energy vampires. and every energy vampire i have ever met they always have this same characteristic where 
they really just take and take and take. And energy vampires can only be stopped by just cutting them out of your life completely. So no, I don't think there's anything wrong with doing that, especially if that person just was never really a friend. There are a lot of good people out there. It's just finding them is such, it's the hardest part. It's just finding the people who you truly vibe with. It takes time and you're gonna have to go through a lot of bad friendships and conversations and awkward like meet and greets to find those like people that you truly vibe with. But once you do, treasure them because they're gonna be your bestest friends for the rest of your life. And again, that takes time. Well, actually speaking of time, <laughs> Oh god! Alright, I think that's all I have for today. Uh, if you would like to submit a question for next week's video, then leave a comment down below. And if you're a YouTube member, then check the community tab to vote on the next game you want me to try out. This was a very interesting episode. I hope you all liked it. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, everything reminds you of something. Bye! Why do male VTubers have such a long pointy chin?